This is Mary Ellen Hurtado, and I would like to welcome all of you to our Induction Liners 101 webinar. Your presenters today are Jay Kelly, Sales Manager with Sela Group. Jay has been with Sela for 15 years, promoting the value of induction liners and the value they present to our global customers. Jay has over 35 years in sales management, serving customers globally in packaging, electronics, and much more. Joining Jay today is Kevin Leif, sales manager at Kaufman Container. Kevin started with Kaufman in 2009 and served in various sales roles, most notably in outside sales for over 10 years. They will be presenting today's webinar, Induction Liners 101. These are the topics that we will cover. As mentioned, your presenters are both Jay and Kevin, Jay from Seelig and Kevin from Kaufman Container. Uh, thank you, Mary Ellen, uh, for the introduction. Um, again, my name is Kevin Leif, and I'm the sales manager here at Kaufman Container. Um, we're very excited to be co-hosting today's webinar with a great partner like the Sealy Group. Um, I'm looking forward to a very informative and educational webinar surrounding all things liners. Um, but before we get into our presentation today on liners, I just wanted to briefly share some information about Kaufman Container. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, we are a family-owned, one-stop packaging supplier with over 100 years of service. We specialize in stock and custom packaging, utilizing a supplier database of over 500 approved domestic and international partners. Um, we also pride ourselves in our value-add approach, offering packaging development, in-house decoration, quality support, and warehouse and logistic services all out of Cleveland, Ohio. As I mentioned on our last slide, um, Kaufman offers full service decoration and graphic design out of Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, we offer screen printing, hot stamping, shrink sleeving, and pressure sensitive labeling. Um, as we've seen our consumer needs change, we've continually invested in new equipment on our floor to meet the needs of our customers. Uh, most recently, we've added new servo print lines, which allow us to screen print up to five colors with precise registration while also being able to label and hot stamp in line. These lines also allow us to print on unique and challenging shapes, such as squares, rectangles, and ovals. And although we primarily decorate on plastic containers, we do have the ability to decorate on glass and aluminum containers, as well as handle some opportunities on tubes and closures as well. Um, with that, just please keep us in mind should a need arise, large or small, um, I feel we have the right equipment in place to suit your needs. And with that, I'll pass it back to Jay to get started on our Liners 101 presentation. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I sincerely apologize for that interruption. It was an unannounced fire drill, and of course, I had to leave the office. So thank you for your patience. Um, good morning, everyone. This is Jay Kelly with the SELA Group. Thank you for joining. We hope you will find this presentation meaningful with real actions you can implement in your businesses today. Whether it's production improvements, added value to your brand, and most importantly, customer satisfaction leading to increased sales and success. I'd also like to thank the Kaufman team for hosting this webinar, inviting Selig to be part of this value added initiative. Let us set the stage by what is meant by over-engineered or in, under-engineered induction sealing applications. Over-engineered, simply put, the customer is using the wrong liner for the given application. Typical reasons are this liner was in stock, it was available in the cap we wanted, or simply knowledge not understanding their options to optimize the value of the liners to enhance their brand and increase sales. This could be compared to using a diamond tip saw blade to cut a two by four. Sure, it works very well, but certainly is overkill. On the opposite side, under-engineered liners can be catastrophic. Example, a liner meant for non-aggressive product fills used on a very aggressive fill months down the road can lead to seal failure, massive recalls, and a very dissatisfied customer. Our goal with this presentation is a step-by-step -step guidance to choosing the best liner for your given application with our expectation we can in 
many ways help customers avoid the pitfalls others have experienced. Silex 50 plus years experience in the rigid packaging industry makes us well suited to provide these best practices. We will have our four, first poll question. When qualifying a new project, product, or package, does your company have procedures in place for choosing the optimal induction liner? Jay, go ahead and you can address our responses. You can see 67% said yes, procedures are in place, with a low 33 of no. Interesting results. Let us begin with the induction liner function and benefits. Uh, we've highlighted just a few here that are very important and really started the industry um, out in the early 70s. Um, Prestone antifreeze was the very first commercial induction seal application simply to prevent leaks. Customers were buying antifreeze and um, putting them in their trunks, putting them in their cars, and they were leaking. Uh, 3M invented the first commercial application and uh, Prestone was the very first customer. So, uh, you know, induction seals originally were used to prevent leaks, but are now used to also ensure consumer confidence, provide tamper evidence, promote shelf life for products that are oxygen or moisture sensitive, retain product aromas, prevent in-store sampling pilferage, as well as provide counterfeit deterrence. A good example of how liners have uh, successfully stopped customers from sampling products in the store. The peanut butter industry historically did not seal their products. Customers would actually taste test the peanut butter, and if they liked it, they'd put the one that they used their finger on back on the shelf and grab a fresh one. Interesting, but certainly induction liner served as a great benefit there to prevent customers from accessing the product. Quick induction liner overview. In our first step, all induction liners have several material layers with a purpose for each layer. This more complex one-piece liner has five different layers, as you can see, that are laminated via four passes through a machine or series of machines. Lamination can be done with different processes depending on the materials, but also depending on the strength of the bond that is required. Sealig offers extrusion lamination for applications that require the most robust adhesion. Uh, when starting out, either designing in an induction liner or optimizing your induction seal that you may currently use, you need to understand that we have two base structures. Those two base constructions are a one-piece and or a two-piece liner. Customers often use one or the other when in fact they would be better served with the opposite. Again, this is, goes back to our over-engineering or under-engineering an induction liner. It's very important at the beginning of a project to understand does your product actually need a one-piece liner or does it need a two-piece? One-piece liners are hermetically sealed to the container and fully transferred to the container without a reseal liner left in the closure. Common usages include single-serve packages, foods such as peanut butter, beverages such as orange juice, and others where reseal is not a critical factor in the package performance. One-piece liners can also help save cost in the fact that if a customer is using a two-piece liner in an application, they may be paying for a product that isn't needed. Again, back to the diamond tip saw blade cutting a two by four. 
overkill for an application. Two-piece liners hermetically seal the container as well as a one-piece liner with a foil combination and a separating backing that stays in the closure for reseal. Common usages include pharmaceutical over-the-counter drugs, aspirin, ibuprofen, Tylenol, et cetera. Chemicals such as antifreeze where a reseal liner helps prevent leaks while reducing oxygen and moisture ingress, for example, aspirin in a moist environment such as a bathroom. The backing that is left in the cap helps to reseal and keep moisture out. Aspirin ultimately would become a hockey puck if it was subjected to too much moisture. Understanding, knowing the market application is critical to identifying best practices in choosing a liner that fits and offers the greatest value to all customers. The next step is after determining whether a one-piece or two-piece liner would be used in the application is understanding what the heat seal layers do. We offer many types of heat seal layers that are resin specific. After choosing whether the application should be a one or two piece, the customer must provide us the information to determine the resin bottle type. Induction liner heat seal layers are designed as resin specific, that is the heat seal family will match the bottle resin type. We find often that this can be an area of failure where a polyethylene heat seal layer may be used on a polypropylene bottle. The customer is unaware that there is a difference and ultimately there could be failure. We have found resin specific heat seal layers outperform and in most cases offer lower costs. Example of a PE based heat seal layer is best matched with an HDPE bottle resin, polypropylene to polypropylene, PET to PET and so on. Universal heat seal layers are very common in the market pl marketplace and are used when filling operations have multiple bottles, likely with the same cap on multiple bottle resins such as PE or PP, and they're filled within the operation, typically sometimes on the same line, sometimes on, on parallel lines, the customers will prefer to just stock one cap and one liner. These are called universal liners. Depending on the product fill, will determine if a universal liner can be used. Universal liners, as mentioned, resin-specific heat seal layers are best performers. Universals work well, but you must take caution in identifying what the product fills are as universals could be subject to attack by the product fill. Container materials. As mentioned, the following bottle resins are the most common when identifying the resin. If unknown, the bottom of the container will carry a recycle number designating the liner heat seal material is dependent on the container material it needs to bond to. This must be identified early in the selection process. Although Sealig has liner solutions for all materials, we must be sure to uh, you must be sure to have the correct heat seal layer with the correct bottle. Now there are some variations to and applications which we will get into later where we do have certain resin specific heat seal layers that cross bottle resins. Glass containers can also be sealed with induction layers and we have sealed several metal containers over the years as well. The next step is, and just as critical, what is being filled? Critical that it's understood that the fill ingredients vary widely from inert to very aggressive. In our opening statement, we discussed over-engineered applications and under-engineered applications. Often very robust liners are specced for the simplest of applications, over-engineered wasting money and more importantly, leading to customer frustration, potentially in removal and or access to the product fill. 
on the flip side, under-engineered liners have been used with very aggressive chemicals leading to disaster in the field, as mentioned, and major recalls. Worst case scenario for all of our customers. Products contain typically food, beverage, could be considered inert, dry products could be considered inert. Of course, very aggressive chemicals, such as in the uh, egg, agricultural industry will attack a liner that is not properly specified for the application. So take caution, understand that the product fill is very critical to the performance. Removal characteristics. Again, as we talked about earlier, the bottle resins play an important critical role to the CLA group identifying and recommending specifying specific liners. In the case of our peelable, uh, we have typically are used as one piece liners. The removal are, is not as critical as a, as a heat seal backing or fill selection. Understanding the options and design reasons are no less important to the success of the brand and the perception of the ultimate user. The number one complaint comment we receive is, I can't stand liners as they are so difficult to remove. Why are they this way? Taking a step back to the application, in many cases, there are very good reasons for why they're designed as they are. Example, FDA over-the-counter drug uh, requirements require some form of tamper-evident feature. Weld seal tamper evident liners are designed to leave residue to alert the customer to potential tampering. Clean peel liners are designed to remove cleanly on items such as orange juice can, with consumer friendly tabbing, clean peel easy removal. Take note of these features again are often used in the wrong application, which leads to frustration by the consumer and the brand's success. A food product that somebody buys in the store, or takes it home, you want that liner to be invisible to them. You don't want it to cause frustration. If it causes frustration, they're going to relate it to your brand and they're going to likely not purchase that brand again. They may not recall exactly why they were frustrated with the product, but it could very well be as a result of a poorly specified liner. So Please take caution early in your process or with current applications where you may be exhibiting failure where the product is not optimized. You don't have the best product for the application. Now, some products like OTC analgesics and regulated drugs may require tamper evidence. Others may not. So again, if depending on your industry and your market application, it's critical that you talk to your representatives to identify the best product for the application. Removal features. Again, this is more of a subjective area. For consumer convenience, Sealig advises the use of our easy peel liners such as our lift and peel, top tab two or Z tab liner solutions. These tab structures do not require different or modified punch tools so they can be used in place of standard non-tab structures. If your package has been designed with the consumer in mind, again, this is step one through 15, again, with the consumer in mind, the ultimate performance of the liner and the success of the brand, this is a very important part. How do we make it great for the customer? It also makes sense to use in all dispensing closure applications as those consumers are already being supplied with a consumer convenient package. These proprietary liner solutions also avoid consumer contact with the sometimes wet or sticky product contact surface. The most common, of course, as you see on the screen is conventional side tabs or more commonly called fry tabs. Again, customers have some dissatisfaction with these products as the tri-tab can be difficult to get a hold of, very small. And I'm certainly we've done consumer studies with our half moon tabs and lift and peel is over, overwhelmingly preferred by consumers. 
ZTAB is a new product to our line. It is interesting in the fact that you could use some standard one-piece liners and basically the tab is folded back over and will not interfere, interfere with the induction seal process. Backings. Backings are integral, integral, integral part of the seal selection. Again, backings for the most part are not as critical as the heat seal layer, but not any less important to the overall functionality and consumer experience. For the most part, all induction seal liners will incorporate a backing, whether it's in a one-piece liner or a two-piece liner mentioned earlier. One-piece liner backings consist of a tabbing such as our lift and peel, foam, board backed or paper backed, film backed, and in this case, they play a much larger role in consumer perception of the product. Typically, a one-piece backing, whether it's foam or board, would be combined with a clean peel, resin-specific heat seal layer for easy removal, tab, uh, lift and peel, for example, uh, lift and peel E for polyethylene and polypropylene bottles. As I mentioned earlier, there are some crossover specifically between bottle resins, such as polyethylene and polypropylene when using a clean peel liner. Again, back to the, the point of identifying the application, identifying the end use will help direct to the very best liner for the application. Two-piece liners consist of either a foam or a pulp left in the closure for reseal. Reseal is a very important part, as mentioned, for helping with leak protection, uh, the integrity of the product fill in some cases. We have a number of different types of two-piece liners, depending on the application. Sela can go into more detail and help you identify the best, whether it's a one-piece or a two-piece liner for your application. The induction seal process, although we're not going to spend a ton of time on this, again, a major, major critical step in ensuring that you're optimizing your induction liner. And again, the end goal for all of us is the satisfaction of the ultimate customer that uses the induction liner. Understanding the induction process is important in choosing an induction seal. Pressure, heat, and time are the variables in this process. The pressure is the pressure between the liner and the container land area, which is controlled by the capping equipment. The heat is what helps soften and melt the heat seal surface of the liner and is controlled largely by the power setting on the induction heating equipment. The time component refers to the time the foil is exposed to the induction heating process and is controlled by the speed of the con con conveyor, which exposes the packages to the induction energy. Our PhD manual is available to customers is, and is on our website. It provides details of the process, setting up ideal parameters, and Troubleshooting. Again, once you've gone through all of the steps of identifying the best liner for the given application, it's critical that this process is also dialed in. A great example of failure um, and or the common call, which Zillig receives, I'm sure, if not 10 times a month, a few times a week is we can't get the liner to seal. Well, first step is we have to go through the induction sealing process. We will identify the liner, and once we identify the liner in use, and we say, yes, that liner should work well, then we will go through the induction sealing process step by step and try and find that low hanging fruit that may help. Uh, application torque of the cap is critical to the performance. So, if you have issues with induction sealing, your induction sealing process today, or if you would even like to enhance it, 
make it better, please reach out so that we can support uh, your business. We're gonna go through a, some of Celig's product portfolios. Um, and basically these products are used in various applications. Make note where one may um, strike a chord with you that you know we should potentially be using a different liner in our application. Feel free to reach out and let us know, tell us about your application, and we can recommend the best product for the application from our portfolio. Starting with traditional reseal liners. These are non-induction primary cap liners are used for both primary and reseal function. They do not provide a hermetic seal to the bottle or tamper evidence like an induction seal, but are excellent choices if a hermetic seal or tamper evidence is not required. These liners are either a foam or a variation of our pulp materials. Again, some applications don't require induction sealing, complete sealing of the package. For example, the cosmetic industry historically has used foam only. What's interesting is that as safety has become more and more and more of a concern in that industry, we are seeing hundreds of new applications a year for induction seals moving to cosmetic products that were historically not sealed. In addition, e-commerce has um, changed a number of huge, huge consumer purchased items, such as um, hand soap, uh, liquid detergents, shipping on Amazon, shipping through Federal Express, uh, UPS, the leaking bottle of hand soap coming to your door is best served by incorporating an induction lighter. Some of our specialty foam liners. Sealing is a leader in the sealing, protection, and aging of wine. So if you're in the wine industry, please reach out. The aging of wine sold with ROPP metal screw caps. These screw caps require specialty materials for not only protecting the wine's taste and sealing the bottle, but also in regulating the wine's aging process through control of oxygen ingress. Our own seal line is used on hundreds of millions of bottles a year to protect even the most delicate of wines. Our expertise in foam production for packaging and our skill in punching is combined to result in precision gasketing, gasket punching for specialty closures, but also use in sealing and providing resilience to pumps, gaskets, and trigger sprayers. So if you have applications that may be suited well for uh, seal especially foam liners, please reach out and or review the current products that you're buying and they may be better suited for one of these products. Induction liners, one piece. We talked about one piece liners earlier. And typically, they're going to be used in the food and beverage industry and they're also going to be typically designed as clean peel and then you get into what I would call the more subjective part of it. What is the backing? Is the backing going to be a foam? Is it going to be a board? Um, is it going to have print? There's a number of things to consider. Again, our trademark products are foil seal, Uniguard, and airfoil. Airfoil is a vented induction liner allowing containers to breathe, utilizing a Sealig one-piece induction liner. Again, depending on your application, would really determine which of these products you would choose. Two-piece, again, we have Sealig's non-tab two-piece induction offerings, our foil seal and safeguard. Our equivalent two-piece version with a venting capability is achieved through the use of a vented one piece induction liner airfoil, and interesting enough, a vented primary foam liner. So, Unifoam combined with a one piece silic induction liner uh, creates our circumvent product. Although these seals are used in combination, they are punching in the closure in separate but sequential operations, or often can be punched simultaneously 
into the cap. Again, back to consumer preference. Uh, CELIG has conducted a number of consumer surveys and we have found overwhelmingly that this is part of optimizing your liner uh, specification or optimizing existing products. Maybe there's an option to increase your brand, improve your brand, increase your sales by improving the overall package, which could include our lift and peel, top tab, or Z tab type liner. Again, top, uh, top tab and lift and peel tab removal systems overwhelmingly preferred by consumers, provided as we all know they work. And lift and peel can often, often be overcooked and then we have a problem with the tab removal. Again, if that's the case for one of your products, if you're currently using lift and peel and you're having trouble with removal, please reach out to Selig Technical Service so that we can support you in your induction seal process and optimizing your overall package. Secondary products that are widely used, although glassing liners were predicted to be um, extinct 40 years ago, there are still certain customers out there that use glassine liners on glass. What they do is they actually have a roller that applies adhesive to the container land area, and they either have pre-cut liners that are applied to the land area and bonded, or they'll bring it in with a roll, cut it, vacuum, place it onto the container. The adhesive will dry relatively quick, and you have a finished product. Example, Quadraseal, one of our products made in our European location. Uh, glassine type liners are more widely used in Europe, and uh, so, but certainly available in North America. Pressure sensitive foam, another product that was predicted 20 years ago to be extinct. Again, customers use pressure sensitive foam uh, induction line. They're not induction. Sorry, pressure sensitive foam liners that incorporate a wax. And when applied to the container, the adhesive bonds and the and the liner itself is removed from the cap and attaches to the container. These applications are many. And again, we find very, very often, whether it's for economic reasons or for um, lack of understanding of what makes a really good seal, we find customers using pressure sensitive backed, pressure sensitive and uh, induction or pressure sensitive liners in applications as they probably should not. This does not comply with the FDA tamper evident requirements and is um, you know, certainly suitable for certain applications, but not others. The best application I've seen for pressure sensitive uh, liners is in um, fertilizers, um, flour, food chemicals, where there may be a high amount of dust within the package, and they don't want the consumer to uh, unscrew the cap and have a face full of dust from the fertilizer ingredients. Great application. So if you have, if you are using pressure sensitives and you'd like to improve on your sealing capabilities, please reach out. Dual seal is a custom product that that we offer and is a, used as an induction binding material which can eliminate threads or other features that are needed to fasten one package component to the other. In this case, it would be a dispensing cap that is permanently bonded to the bottle so that the cap cannot be removed. And in many cases, uh, CPG brands do not want their product refilled, let's say at the restaurant. They, of course, want to re they want to sell their product and to avoid uh, basically their bottles being used with maybe a generic product fill, they can 
uh, permanently bond the cap for very difficult removal. The savings from threat, threat elimination uh, by reducing the resin content can also be a real value add to your customer and also help support sustainability initiatives. Again, back to our comments regarding best practices and optimizing the liner for your customers. Sealig offers custom print for all of our induction liners. They can be special prom promotions, such as what you see with the um, pink uh, on the left. This was a cancer or breast cancer awareness program years ago. Um, brand awareness, our customer uses their logo, such as the second one. Brand protection from counterfeiting, very important. And the oil industry, for example, the motor oil industry is heavily counterfeited. So many of our oil uh, producing companies will either get custom print, logo on the cap, or excuse me, on the induction liner, which helps protect their brand. There's also commercial applications for 1D or 2B, 2D barcodes where a customer can actually scan it with their phone. It will take them right to the CPG's website and they may be able to pick up a coupon or, or get more information regarding the product. We also have the capability to print our lift and peel products with the customer's logo or message and of course we have our standard advisory sealed for your protection lift and peel max is a relatively new product as i mentioned earlier full face printing printed uh, at sealig and with a great flexibility to prevent to pr print any message that um, our customers potentially would like to see Any counterfeit technology. Again, this is a very interesting industry in the fact that, of course, I believe everybody knows that pharmaceuticals are heavily counterfeited. And as mentioned earlier, motor oils are heavily counterfeited. Overt typically is going to be a message. It's going to be a print. It's going to be this protection strip that you see, which uh, in the past had been a hologram. Celig has the ability now to pr pr print this message on uh, very unique colors and shapes and forms to help the, cost, the, consume, the ultimate customer filler protect their brand. Covert is basically covert. The, the consumer, the purchaser of the product does not even know that there is a message there. The pharmaceutical industry uses many types of covert and covert um, anti-counterfeit methods to ensure that they can protect their product and identify anything that's counterfeited on the shelf. Poll question number two. Yes, our second poll question is, have you experienced packaging quality issues due to paneling or bloating? So we had about 66% voted. Thank you for your participation. And Jay, if you want to go ahead and just address, um, you know, our, our split is not quite equal. Mary Ellen, could you share the poll results with me? Uh, they're on the screen right now. 57% yes, 43% no. Interesting. Okay. 
Silix container venting solutions are specifically designed to eliminate container bloating or paneling issues caused by a myriad of factors. Among many other benefits, our venting solutions allow brand owners to bring the most effective and cost-efficient formulations to the market. Incorporating breathability into packaging expands the customer's formulation options, allows for sustainable and cost-effective packaging designs, and can provide a unique point-of-sale consumer experience. Paneling and bloating, of course, are not acceptable for brand enhancement, although the ultimate consumer may not pay that much attention to it. It certainly is not a good look for the CPG. It's critical that you reach out to us if you have bloating or paneling issues to discuss what options we have. Selig uh, purchased uh, Performance Systematics a little over a year ago, and we have fully integrated uh, the, our venting solutions into our induction seal product lines. And we certainly like to have further discussion with you on how to eliminate potential bloating and paneling issues. 57% of you commented yes. So obviously, it's a very, very challenging. Um, challenging for your brand, and we'd certainly like to help uh, solve those issues. Recent new inter product introductions, again, we're going back to how do we optimize the consumer experience? Optimizing the consumer experience is critical in the success of a brand for years. Uh, glass, excuse me, um, for years, glass was very, very difficult to bond to. Um, in the past year, we have intro introduced a revolutionary new product uh, for bonding to glass. It also, it, Liner provides a robust seal to glass containers, but they also meet the EU regulations regarding food contact for oily or fat containing products. In the past, products on the market could never successfully seal those applications as they would fail. We believe this is the first liner in the industry to meet these new regulations. Our proprietary heat seal has been incorporated into our consumer preferred lift and peel, as well as our one-piece Uniguard and two-piece Delta Seal liners. These products, uh, we've had some great success on glass. Uh, where failure was potentially a problem in the past, we'd certainly like to um, discuss with you further options to enhance your product. Vent Shield. Vent Shield is a venting industry first and patented technology ideal for venting highly viscous liquids that would clog any other vent. Perfect for venting oxygen, scavenging lotions, oxygen scavenging lotions, thick hair care products, gels or creams that cause containers to panel or collapse. Our Tamper Top Tab 2 Tamper Seal development addresses the consumer's problem with easily access, accessing product that also requires tamper evidence and a hermetic seal. This problem is well known by consumers of over-the-counter consumer products sold in plastic bottles. This industry requires the seal to be hermetic, protecting the product from oxygen and moisture, but also to be tamper evident, usually by means of a tool or having to puncture the liner with your finger. The tamper seal uses a half moon tab, allowing for consumer convenience while still offering tamper evidence and a hermetic seal. The foil ring left on the land area is consistent and clean, allowing for an ideal reseal surface. Again, we've had great interest in tamper seal for an aging baby boomer population um, with their over-the-counter medicines and or um, prescription drugs. The ability to open liners can be very difficult. So we found that this product has um, very good value add. 
The brand protection strip is an inexpensive way to instill consumer confidence by having a strip of material that appears visually to offer anti-counterfeit features, but is simply custom printing on a small strip of decorative film. It may look like a hologram, but is significantly less expensive. Customer support. Our global field service resources assist our customers in root cause analysis in conjunction with other equipment and material suppliers. We also assist or manage induction sealing line trials in customer facilities, as well as conduct line optimization studies. Additionally, we offer implant induction process training based on our popular PHT manual. Again, it goes back to optimizing your liner selection for the very best consumer experience. Sealy can help with line evaluations and certainly um, support you in any way we can to ensure you have the very best liner for your application. Our industry recognized customer service department has extensive product line knowledge and has several multilingual service representatives. Each location has experience in international documents and compliance regulatory requirements. With our 24 seven on, online support at ceiling, customers can access our PHT manual and troubleshooting guide for immediate assistance, as well as information on our products, our storage and handling recommendations. Next, Kevin will outline a couple of case studies. Yeah, thanks, Jay. Um, you know, we always want to highlight, um, you know, where we've been successful in, in, in helping our customers. And as a full service packaging supplier, um, we're always trying to find the best solution for our customers. Um, that may be helping to select the right bottle, um, pick the right resin, find the best closure, liner, or secondary process um, to help packaging stand out on the shelves. Um, in this instance, our customer had a formulation that was leading to paneling. Um, initially, these containers were fluorinated, um, but fluorination actually didn't fully fix their paneling concerns. Um, also, as a secondary process, um, the fluorination added cost um, and also additional transit. Um, through helping to diagnose the issue, uh, we partnered with Selig Grand Rapids on a vented liner. Um, doing so reduced costs and help uh, help to improve the overall supply chain. And these results of the vented liner actually outperformed that um, of the fluorination. Um, and I'm happy to say this customer has been successfully um, using this packaging configuration for over 10 years. Um, next one, Jay. Yeah, so here's another example. Um, of trying to help a customer on the front end diagnose some issues. Um, with this high-end beauty customer, um, we knew up front that their formulation would cause some bottle distortion um, in their 32 ounce uh, HDPE bottle. Um, the hair care product um, contains some various levels of hydrogen peroxide, um, which created a need for some sort of either secondary process or vented liners. Um, at the time that we worked on this project, um, fluorination was not an option for our customer uh, because of their sustainability initiatives. Um, again, with partnering with the Sealy Grand Rapids team, uh, we were able to select the best venting process to successfully launch this product line for our customer. Um, and with that, before we get to the Q&A here, I just want to thank everybody um, for, for tuning in here for the Induction Liner 101. Um, at Kaufman, we have a lot more resources that you can look at if you view our website. Um, we have blog posts. Um, we also have a section on our website called Kaufman Container College. Um, so please check those out. Uh, we also have a photo gallery that highlights various um, packaging product projects that we've worked on in the past. And if you can, please follow us on our social media platforms as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, for more informative videos. Uh, we will now um, hit our question portion of our uh, webinar. 
thank you all for submitting questions. As mentioned, we'll, we'll try to get to those, um, but we're gonna address a few here. One from a major CPG, one from a closure molder, and one from a distributor. So the first question is, how do you define the success criteria for the seal or bond to glass and transition from the pilot line to the full scale production? Jay and Kevin will answer that. Hi, this is Jay Kelly. Um, that's a great question. Um, glass, as we mentioned earlier, with our glass fuse technology, uh, we have been able to overcome some of the some of the areas where it was unclear exactly how well or how long a bond to glass lasts. Bottom line is bonding to glass is very difficult. We've known that for years. And we've certainly worked towards improving that with a better understanding of the industry. Many factors, including liner choice, coatings on the glass container land area, induction seal process, and aging all contribute to the success or failure of the seal. Uh, Kevin, I think you would like to comment on your interaction with your glass supplier and some of the treatments that they provide. Yeah, thanks for that, Jay. I, you know, just to kind of touch on this as well, um, you know, we've had a lot of customers over the years, um, you know, ask this question. I mean, how do we successfully induction seal our glass containers? And um, oftentimes, you know, we're we're having a hot end and a cold end treatment, um, you know, placed on our glass. And and one of the important factors there to note is that. Hot end treatments, I think when there's a tin oxide present in that coating, um, can actually help to uh, increase the bond. So it's very important to make sure that you're specifying um, that hot end treatment getting above the land area. Um, but on the opposite end, you need to ensure that your cold end coating is placed below the threading um, because that, that substance can actually deter um, liners from being well, you know, bonded well. So it's very important up front to understand um, how you need to build those coatings out and just verbalizing it with your supplier on what the need is. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so the second half of that question, how do you transition from pilot line to full scale production? Well, once the product has been identified, the glass induction seal liner has been identified as the best candidate potentially to seal this product. But dialing in the induction seal process to ensure a strong bond, whether liquids or dry goods being, are being filled is essential. So the first step in verifying or transitioning is dialing in the induction seal process. Second step is in verifying your bond is utilizing vacuum chambers to check for air leaks, gradually ramping pressure to industry standards of 10 to 12 inches of mercury, um, basically comparing that to uh, transfer, transportation up over the Rocky Mountains, for example. Um, the second verification method, and very critical, especially with glass, is for the customer to conduct accelerated aging tests to ensure the bond remains stable over a given period of time, whether it's three months or five years. Aging tests allow you to feel confident in your induction liner choice, your process bonding operations, and the product fill that may potentially attack. Whether the tests are conducted on a pilot line or production line, the same test methods apply to ensure a robust seal. So I don't see any difference between transition from a pilot line to full scale production, as long as your back end testing and verifying is robust. Oops. Uh, the second question, 
if a liner fails in the field, how do you determine if it is a result of a bad liner or the result of a bad induction process? Selig offers lab assistance to clearly define the failure. Sample failures will be evaluated based on industry experience and best practices, main causes that can include a poor initial induction seal process, bond is too weak to start and degrades causing leakers, overheating, too much induction power. Often customers believe more is better to improve the seal when in actuality there is a diminishing return in performance. Again, using the wrong liner heat seal combination for the product fill. Aggressive product fills can attack causing failure, <clears throat> which could be immediate or over many months. Again, choosing the correct liner for the application, setting up the induction process correctly, verifying via test methods such as aging and vacuum testing are critical to the success of the package. Seelig and Kaufman can help diagnose the failures and will work closely with you on, a, on corrective measures to ensure success in the future. That is, if you have a failure, it's best to send sealing samples, uh, failed, filled, unopened, sealed packages so that we can review the seal themselves, identify the failure, and then support you in the corrected actions. The next question is, what is the difference between a pulp and a paper liner? Sorry about that, I keep bumping my mouse. Um, it really depends on the application and where each is being used. Sealing incorporates pulp and paper interchangeably depending on the product structure. Pulp is used only for two-piece induction seals, temporarily wax bonded to foil seal, um, typically in 20, 30, or 35 mil thicknesses. The pulp acts as the medium to absorb the wax, when melted, allowing for separation, and most important acts as a reseal to protect the product fill, such as aspirin in a wet environment. Paper, on the other hand, is used primarily in one-piece applications where the product requires a backing for strength, yet the market demands more economical options. We also use paper as a medium in two-piece products to absorb the wax, allowing for separation. In this case, the paper is combined with typically a foam backing, which acts as the reseal liner in the cap. For, foam, of course, will not absorb wax, so paper is the logical choice in thinner versions, 2 mil and 5 mil thicknesses, contrary to pulp. Again, pulp and paper are going to be used specific, for specific applications. You're going to see pulp used in two-piece applications, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, and more often than not, you'll see paper used in applications such as peanut butter where an economical product is required. Again, thank you for participating. Um, I will turn it back over to Mary Ellen. Thank you. I would like to extend our apologies again for um, the delay in this webinar, but we will get you the recording. So your participation and attendance today is much appreciated by both Selig and Kaufman. A link of the recording will be sent out um, after we get it all compiled. And then within this presentation, you have both Jay and Kevin's contact information if you have any questions or follow-up, but we rest assured we will be following up with each of you. Thank you again for your time and your patience.